Calm biker here. Just on my way into the office, and this is not rush hour. I guess this is all the people who are late. <laughs> it's actually about quarter past nine now, so I'm heading in for a meeting at ten o'clock. And if I was in a car, I suspect I wouldn't make it on time. I was just thinking while I was sat here, because even on a bike it's pretty tricky to get through some of this stuff, about what they're talking about doing about it. Because it's just been the budget, which will give you an idea of how far behind I am on uploading. And um, around the time of the budget, they were talking about road improvements and how they were going to potentially you know, put more lanes on motorways, uh, improve the roads, make them wider, get them flowing better. They seem to always do it at the same time as saying that they want to get rid of the national speed limit on the roads that we like <laughs> and go down to 40s and 50s everywhere. But um, they're talking about improving the roads, improving the infrastructure is what they always say, making it easier generally to get to London, uh, as if we all want to go to London. I mean, it's fine if you live there, you know, I'm not going to say anything particularly, but we, there, there is stuff outside of London as well, the politicians don't seem to quite understand that. Whenever they talk about it, it gets me thinking. I remember when I was at school, many, many years ago, uh, probably talking about it in the 80s and 90s. And the idea was, oh blimey, it's windy. The idea was that computers would make it so that people didn't have to go to work every day. So they would do all the drudge, they would, you know, the interconnectivity would come in. Nobody talked about internet back then because it didn't really exist as the internet. But computers would take away this need for everybody to travel in. And it got me thinking that if you really want to sort out the traffic problems, you have to look at what's causing them. And out of town, different. Right, but in town, and I mean this isn't really in town, but I'm classing it as kind of in town because it's between towns and things like that. Um, it's usually two things. It's a school run and it's people going to work. Because the vast majority of people go to work to get there at about 9 o'clock-ish and leave at about 5, 6 o'clock-ish. So they all want to use the roads at once. And in the morning it's doubly bad because people are taking the kids to school why they can't walk or go on a bicycle like I used to I have no idea but people are taking the kids to school and everybody goes to school at the same time and everybody comes home from school at the same time and in the morning those times are very similar to the working times you're not really going to be able to change when people go to school that's kind of fixed everybody's got to turn up at the same time haven't they otherwise it's going to make it a bit difficult for teachers to actually teach everybody. But work. Everybody goes to work at the same time. Why? So my alternative budget would be still improve the roads because they need it. I mean, filling the odd pothole there and there would be nice. But I would say give tax breaks to businesses. And I know that's unpopular. But give tax breaks to businesses who do specific things, two specific things I would say. One, for the people who don't really need to be in an office, I mean things like warehouses and call centres, well call centres actually no, so I'll, I'll lump in call centres with offices, so people don't need to be in an office or call centre, um, most of them don't need to be there, you know if you're doing work at a computer all day, you don't need to physically be on site generally, so I would give tax breaks for companies based on the percentage of employees that were allowed to work from home and that actually did work from home because rather than telling them they're allowed to and then asking them to come in every day that would be cheating the system but for people who actually worked from home I would give them tax breaks and a tax break for people who work from home to have maybe free internet provision free fast internet provision and I know that's a money giveaway but you wouldn't have to spend as much on the roads would you? The roads would be probably half the traffic that you get now at the rush hours and that in itself would save a lot of money and improve productivity so I think that would be my first tax break 
my second tax break, so you work, work out what this one's doing. My second tax break again would be for how you controlled workers, but this would cover everybody who couldn't work from home. So I'm being fair to everybody, and this would be a tax break for companies who allowed flexible working hours, but not this crummy flexible working hours that they've got at the minute, where they just say uh, if you you know if you're a parent and you want an extra hour to get your kids to school or whatever it might be then we can sort something out if you have the, the balls to actually go and ask for it. And in a lot of companies, I'm sure that people would not even ask because they wouldn't like the response or they would be scared of what the response might be. Or maybe they would be looked upon unfavorably for asking in the first place. I mean, just giving out flexi time. The place I used to work at had flexi time and it worked amazingly well because it allows people to do what suits them so the employees are happier um, it still can have rules so when you're working in teams you know you can have rules so that the company where I was said we must have somebody in between 9 and 5 uh, and we must have somebody in over lunch at all times um, but apart from that you could do pretty much what you wanted to as long as you got your 40 hours in a week and you would just clock in and clock out so that they could tot up your hours and make sure you'd done the right hours. But it meant for me, uh, my drive to Leeds in a morning, that if I did it to get there at nine o'clock would probably take me an hour and a half to two hours because of traffic, would take me an hour in the morning. Because I'd go at seven in the morning. And I w on a Monday, I'd then leave. I'd go at seven in the morning and I wouldn't leave until six or seven in the evening. So I had no traffic to contend with most of the time. Unless there was an accident on the motorway, not a problem. By the end of the week, I'd done all my hours, so I would go in at 11 in the morning and come home at 2. And I'd have an hour for lunch in the middle of that as well. Or a few of us would say, let's go 11 till 2 and then we'll pop to the pub. Not for getting drunk or anything, but, you know, just for a nice in, in summer, a nice sit in the beer garden with some lemonade, nice Friday afternoon chilling out before the weekend came. So we thought it was brilliant. The company also thought it was great because they didn't have people having to get up an hour earlier, so being an hour extra tired by the end of the day because of the traffic. And if everybody did it, it self-organises. You would find that there would be a set of people for whom it wasn't possible still. And those people, unfortunately, would be going in for the nine o'clock starts again. But with a lot less traffic on the road, because everybody who had the flexible time and didn't like the traffic would either set off earlier or later in order to avoid it so the traffic naturally starts to come down so that'd be my alternative transport policy <laughs> so that's my thoughts I think those two little tax breaks would make it much better for the people who were allowed to make you know take advantage of them and for the people who weren't allowed to take advantage of them I think it would still make things better because of the lack of people on the roads. Anyway, let me know what you think in them there comments. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye bye.